Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 412 for Tuesday, the 11th of August, 2015. So nice to have you here. We made it! Yes! Way to go, back. Robbie and Sasha! Yeah! Now, you're back in Barrie. Back in Barrie. I can't wait to tell you all about my time and all the fun trinkets and toys that I got to play with. Awesome. I can't, I can't wait to tell you what's coming up in the newsroom. Ah. Here's what's coming up in the Category5.tv newsroom. A factory which made up to 41,000 fake Apple iPhones has been raided in China with nine arrests. Personal details of up to 2.5 million car fo- phone warehouse customers may have been accessed in a cyber attack. As Windows 10 upgrades continue, we're bound to see how free it really is. And one of the little added fees some didn't expect is having to pay extra to play DVDs. A website in Russia has been caught exploiting a serious zero-day vulnerability in Mozilla's Firefox browser, prompting the open source developer to deliver an emergency update that fixes the flaw. And Google has unveiled a surprising restructuring, creating a new parent company called Alphabet Inc. Stick around. The full details are coming up later in the show. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Starring Sasha Dermatis. Hillary Rumble. Krista Wells. Eric Kidd. And your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. The dreaded situation is you've created a server, you've got a Linux machine, you got your computer, and you forgot your root password. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? That... (laughs) Well, I'm sorry to interrupt your singing. That is totally something I would do. I would... I would forget my password. What are you gonna do? We're gonna show you tonight how to reset your root password. Also great for pulling pranks on your friends. Maybe that's not a good idea. Do not do that. Uh, can I say hey to uh, Sparkly Balls? And who else do we got in the chat room? I see you. Oh, Dennis Kelly. Yeah. Linden. Dave Maydu and Nate UK shouts out. Nice. GWG. Nice. Dave Maydu. You already said that. JWMP saying hi to you as well. If you have questions, you can always ping me. Is that a thing? Ping me? I don't know what you can do. You can ask me in the Poke. chat room. Poke me. Ping me. <laughs> <laughs> Just poke her in the chat room and I'll actually poke her in the head. That's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> and I will uh, hopefully get to them by the end of the... Well, by I, I mean Robbie. We'll get to them by the end of the show. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all it's all you. I can't keep up with this stuff here flying by on my screen. So it's it's all you, buddy. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, no, we are on the air. We've had a crazy week. Can I just say that much? Um, Last week. Okay, let's start with the good. Yes. Then we'll talk about bad. Okay, first of all. The good. So much fun last week. Nothing but good feedback. Uh, yeah. At. Uh, 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 nothing but good feedback about episode number 411. I had fun being able to broadcast for you from the cottage, <laughs> from the forest. <laughs> and these teeny drones are awesome. Make sure you check them out. Cat5. Dot .tv slash teeny drones. Uh, while I was there, I checked out these uh, free play buddy uh, rechargeable flashlights with the solar panel, everything. Right. Uh, I've got one of these to give away. You've still got one week to qualify. Uh, so make How sure, do you do that? Uh, all you got to do is email contest at category5.tv. And when you do that, you've got to include your registered username on the category5.tv website. Is it just one email per registered user? Yes. Okay. Well, you can only qualify once. That's okay. Right. Okay. That's good to know. I was just tapping my mic just to make sure I'm good. Hello. There we go. First day back in the studio, Studio D. 
having torn everything apart. Right. And then putting it all back together. I said we had a kind of a, a crazy week. You'll notice that the MiFi 2, which we reviewed on the show a long time ago and has powered the internet connection here at Studio D for since we've been here, died. What? Well, yeah. It died this week. So I feel like we need to bury it. <laughs> but that, it probably has mercury and lead mm-hmm. and cadmium and lithium. Well, funny story about yes. things dying is that, see this wonderful Not sheet? Not usually a sentence that you hear. <laughs> funny story about things dying. <laughs> this sheet here, oh, yes. Robbie oh, just gosh, printed guys. up. <laughs> oh, my daughter is here tonight. Okay, yes, Robbie's daughter's here tonight. And she looked over and said, Daddy, why is the printer smoking? <laughs> <laughs> so hot off the press. This is what we'll be talking about today. I very quickly unplugged <laughs> it as soon as all three sheets had printed. <laughs> Remember how so, we had a, a, our printer die and then uh, we had a, a donated printer to get us through black and white. Uh, and yeah, the fuser assembly was smoking tonight. So that's not a good situation. No. Uh, and uh, But it gets, it gets even better. And by better, do you mean worse? Yes, I do. The laptop here uh, is my family laptop because the laptop that you see on the show and and we've it's been old faithful um unfortunately we truly can't bury that that would be wrong yeah see if it this is sad is that yeah there it is that's it you can't really see the uh the resolution but you can see all the lines that's so the screen has actually died Right. A very painful, excruciating death. The sad thing about it is that the laptop still works fine. So fortunately, at the cottage, what I was able to do was hook it up to an external TV through HDMI right. output and use it and do the production and, and broadcast the show. But she's dead. Jim. These so. are the sort of expenses that would be covered if this was the sort of show that wasn't based solely on volunteers <laughs> volunteer <laughs> yeah, time yeah. absolutely and sometimes you take for granted the fact that we are volunteers here and that uh, a lot of it happens because of uh, as far as the expenses go is because of your contributions using our amazon links being a part of our patreon profile make sure you support us through that yeah uh, we've had a little bit of a lull over the past couple of weeks while i've been away and i'd really love to see some more contributions coming in through that um, mm-hmm. but it is it's really making a difference it's fantastic and i appreciate everybody that's been supporting us that way even through paypal we have right. some regular subscribers who contribute via paypal it's mm-hmm. easy and the fees are less for us that way yeah so it really hel- helps out um yeah, because what you, what you do helps. I mean, but it's so hard for us because we want to grow bigger. And yes. then at the same time, we no, need to right? replace some things yeah. even that... And we're paying rent now. We're here in Studio D yeah. and our rent, uh, because we're, uh, our lease is up. Our mm-hmm. lease came up uh, July 1st. So here we are. We're a month and a half in to our new lease. So it's you know month to month we we pay the bills, mm-hmm. and we're doing it. And I'm so proud of what we've established, what we've created, and and the the fact that uh, we are pulling it off. But it is a big hit when we get some technical issues. So I am very careful. I'm I try to be a good steward with the money that is contributed to the show, and and I do my best to make wise purchasing decisions. The laptop, just so you know. Um, I had priced out a replacement screen. It is Mm -hmm. the screen. Thankfully, Mm -hmm. it's not the video card because that means we can repair the laptop and put a new screen in. But a new screen for this particular model of laptop is $260 Canadian. Yeah. And Uh. as you know, you can actually get computers almost about that price. So I looked into it and I did find a refurbished laptop for two hundred and fifty four dollars so a few dollars less than buying a new screen for this one and i hate to do that because i'm not the kind of guy that will e-waste something that works i like to right you've seen my van it's like it's rusting out like (laughs) you saw my my old van like we had a catalytic converter that was louder than than death but um so yeah i've ordered that laptop and should be here within the next couple of days but for now we're we're kind of makeshifting and last minute throwing it together. Internet, because it died, went back to Bell, our provider, and, okay, well, what can you do for me? Well, we can put you on a contract 
for two years Mm -hmm. and you'll have to pay $100 to get the new model. The new model does not support external antennas. Okay. It is LTE, so it's good, and it has Ethernet ports and everything, as, okay. a, as opposed to this is just a, a mobile hotspot, mm-hmm. but it does have the USB output as a modem, which was cool. That's how we were doing it. Um, so I thought, why don't we get on to our local classifieds, and right. I found somebody nearby that was selling a Netgear LTE, oh. um, they call it a Turbo Hub, and it is, it's a four-port switch that gets its internet through LTE and then shares it out to all the computers. And uh, I was able to get that for 35 bucks because it was used. So a company had it and they went out of business and they were selling off the old stuff. And so I got that um, and it has the ability for us to put external antennas. So if we ever wanted to put one on the roof, we get a better signal. That is cool. But it does seem to be working pretty good tonight. Hopefully nobody has any trouble. Uh, we're getting about 27 mega- megabits down and about 12 up so i think we're doing pretty good but the nice thing about that one is it was going to be 300 bucks for that particular device if i didn't want to contract 35 bucks done and done so that's what i mean by uh by being smart we should save all of these um pieces of old expired technology the tech that ran and the show. at the end of the year we should do an in memorandum thing like they do what you know at the end of the award ceremonies for yeah, all the yeah. people who have passed away we go. can just do a little sad sarah mclaughlin song yeah and I show like the them idea. all uh, there we go <laughs> but what a mad dash right so this has got a micro sam when? i had to go and uh, i had a friend actually go to the store because i was at work all day picked up a, a micro sim to standard sim adapter to make it work in the new device Got us up and running like 15 minutes ago, and here we are. Hoy. Welcome to the show. Good. Adam's, Adam's off tonight. That is that is true. Adam is gone. He's uh, yeah. He's been doing uh, the tour of British Columbia, so mm-hmm. that's that's pretty fun. Still in the country, but five hours away by plane. By plane, <laughs> wow. Just. I am excited about some of the new planes, the Concorde 2.0 that's coming out. That's going to be able to get you from one end of the world to the other in about an hour. That have you heard about that oh, yet? No. Maybe we'll have to bring that up in the newsroom segment next week. Maybe. <laughs> nice. Now, this, Justin, we have a postcard. This is the last Excellent. of the postcards. Not the last of all postcards ever. Oh, no, keep ever. them coming, folks. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. This is the However, last of the postcards that we're, we will exchange this for that. You get nice vinyl stickers. This. this we do is sell these. You can go to shop.category5.tv. Enough. It's like 100 bucks. It really yeah. helps us out. Yeah, a hundred dollars for those. You can give us a hundred bucks for them. Absolutely, if you want. and if you I do that, I will stamp the back that. with "Thank you, Sasha." Stamp it because <laughs> you can't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get her to stamp all of them. <laughs> Thanks, Sasha. Thanks. Sa- it says "Thank you!" Exclamation mark. Sasha. Right, Smiley yes. face. Yeah, I Hello from Centennial. Colorado, a suburb of Denver. Oh, cool! Thank you for answering my question on episode 405. Why well, you're welcome. I always appreciate learning from your show, so keep up the good work. P.S. I'm supporting you through Patreon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I thought that they were awesome for sending a postcard. Now, yeah. double awesome. You are very awesome. Caps lock, underscore. <laughs> asterisk, asterisk, yeah. asterisk. Sincerely, uh, Data Mangler. So Very cool. Well, thanks for sending that in. I don't see an address there, so make sure you send us your address by email, okay? So I can send this to you. I don't have a return address. How close is uh, Denver to the uh, the spill that just happened? About Mm. it's a little northeast of of the spill, I suppose. Yeah, eh? that's scary stuff. And that was this was probably sent to us before any of that happened. But I hope I hope everything's okay there for you and your family, Data Mangler. Mm -hmm. That's uh, something else. That is, that's true. Now, thanks for sending the postcard. Don't forget, email me your address, okay? I want to send you some stickers. You know what's cool? What's up? The James Donkey 007. I love house. this thing. And we sell those, you know, in our shop. We sell them in our shop, and they're available. And they've been selling like hotcakes. They're available they've in the US. They've sold out twice already, and they've only been out for a month. I want one so bad. Yeah. I have no re- real reason at all to have just one. Just because it's awesome. I just, you they know what? I'm going to buy one when they're available in Canada. Mm. I'm going to buy one and bring it into work and just like leave it at work in the work office so that everybody can love it as much as I do. But I don't need a mouse because I have a laptop. I, You're on a laptop right now with a mouse with I, a James Donkey 007. Works great. I it? love it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I can't use it in the newsroom because it's green. 
<laughs> Did you mention the website that the people can check that out if they're wondering what? What is she talking about? James Donkey, what? The actual James Donkey website or our website where you can buy one? Oh, yeah, no, of course, ours where you can buy one. <laughs> <laughs> they can, yeah. you can like, find what? the info through What are you link. talking yeah. about? Sack Cat5.tv slash 007. 007. 007. Yeah. So super easy. Easy peasy. <laughs> or what, what we mean by that is when you go through our links, it, they, they keep track of where the sales come from, and it, it does go to support the show. And uh, we received another check from Amazon this week, and it, it really makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And uh, people purchasing things like the James Donkey 007, um, we're hoping to get these uh, teeny drones on there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, for now, you can go through cat5.tv slash teeny drones and buy them direct from Quebec. Um, but, you know, we're working on our, our yeah. inventory. You, you know what is really helpful, I realize? When people start talking about buying stuff from Amazon, I've started saying, you know what? Like, mm. even if they don't really watch the show, I'm sure. like, you know, it doesn't hurt at doesn't all to mention, to you. you're going to shop on Amazon anyway. Just do it this way. Go to all the public library computers and change <laughs> the DNS record to go through our link. Perfect. Anyone all over the world. <laughs> I love it. Mm. Um, Blip TV. They're dead. They're dead. Officially. Officially dead. August we knew it was 20th. Coming. August 20th is like nine days away. They're shutting down. Goodbye. Goodbye, Blip TV. And speaking of, you know, our little funeral services for devices and services, Blip, you know, even though they really didn't ever make a big name for themselves, mm -hmm. comparatively, I mean, I'm comparing to something like YouTube. So, Blip... It's still going to be missed, and I, you know, we made the switch to, uh, to Vimeo after Blip first announced that they were acquired mm -hmm. by this Disney company. So... Uh, so Maker Studio, who are they? Yeah, they're a company that is uh, that's owned by Disney and is oh, trying okay. to restructure, build this new service, Maker Studio, and and try to create something new and fresh and not right. not the same thing. Blip was always, I mean, you look at Vimeo now, and and what Blip tried to become is uh, a distribution platform for content creators, and not just. The average YouTuber that creates little five-minute videos that they created on a, a their cell phone, like we're talking as professional as can possibly be, right? Right. Filmmakers and stuff like that. So, so with Blip closing down, that meant uh, we transitioned our RSS feeds and the mm -hmm. content for uh, all you know where you download your your files from and everything has been transitioned over to Vimeo. Uh, but it's still sad to see them go. Yeah. I think so. Especially when it's such a good, it was such a good company, like good functioning. Yeah. yeah. They, they had a pretty interesting monetization platform. Little different than, say, YouTube. Um, but it, and it's, it seemed to work for us for a while. Hmm. Blip TV. But, uh, yeah, they're gone. Nah. Now they're gone. That's it. They've been bought out and shut down. Now, uh, this is interesting. And I just... I just noticed it here on the what sheet. Is it? it says the International Federation of Robotics released a study recently which highlights concerns about surgery robots. Here's the deal. I feel like this should be on the news. It why should, is this yeah. why is this here? Whoa, what is this? What? This, looks this like a little gem. This looks like a news story. This does, but it's too short to be a news story. Okay, Zachary. let me just read this. You've now. heard about these do it yourself Holy. surgical kits though, where they're create people are able to buy kits online and they might be powered by an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi computer and you can build a robot to do your surgery. No, I have not heard of this. Like in the States or some somewhere like that where you don't have free health care, I would think that would be kinda tempting in some cases if you didn't mind taking the risk, but what's happened? Holy mm. moly. She's okay. Forward. So, <laughs> do it yourself robotic surgery kits are being experimented with, but even the medical ones are not doing so well. Over 140 deaths have come as a direct result of robotic mm. surgeries. A direct result. Over 1,000 injuries. The study says broken and burnt out parts falling into the patient's bodies oh resulted in over 1,000 injuries and one death. Electrical spark caused almost 200 injuries. Reports say the surgical teams need better troubleshooting training. 
Okay, so these so are trouble. Okay, this isn't even good. do it yourself. Oh, good. These are real, legit hospital surgeries using robotics. So at first, I was thinking, like, what happens? You set this up with a program, and you lay yourself underneath <laughs> it, and you take a couple it's shots like, of whiskey, bite on yeah. a stick, and there you go. Yeah, <laughs> typical. Don't trust the robots to do your surgery for you. Think you. about it, though, and yeah, there's a lot of stuff is going robotic, and and what happens when these machines break down because. But I guess even oh. like what mm-hmm. what do they call it when the surgery is really tiny? What are they? Micro. I can't remember. Macro. That, yeah, it's macro surgery. M- no, micro. microscopic surgery. Micro. Micros. Macro's big. Macro what? is not that. <laughs> so even <laughs> that, I guess you surgeon. use you use some amount of robotics, right? Because yeah. they're using big hand motions. Well, to now they can do surgeries things. with like a little pinprick hole, and the robot part goes in and does the surgery and sparks up. Evidently, but if it's damaged. The surgeon doesn't know how to necessarily fix those things. They're not an engineer. All of a sudden, you're like the guy in operation laying on the table. <laughs> anyway, that's crazy Great news. Thought. Thanks for that one. Sorry. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you want to talk about the main part of the show now? Sure. I feel oh, like yeah. I, you want to like actually the show? <laughs> oh, yeah. We're halfway. Oh, all right. So we're halfway through. And, and now it's news time. It's Welcome almost to the Sasha news time. So why don't we hit it up with a, a viewer question or two uh, to take us to the news and then we'll, and then we'll get oh, into it. Okay. Our, and then we'll do it from there. Yeah. I'll just, all right. I'll just play while you're doing that. You'll just do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. These things are addictive, folks. That is so super neat. Super neat. Are you going to read questions or what? Oh, well, no. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> it's too distracting. I know. Here is a question from Andy Cooper. <laughs> I'm like Eric Kidd all of a sudden. I got a toy. I got a toy. <laughs> Andy, hi guys. I was just wondering if it's possible for me to embed the live stream of your show into my own web page. I don't have Roku and don't particularly want one. Huh. Hey now. We have enough TV platforms here in the UK without yet another box to sit on top of the TV. You can hide it behind the TV. However... Um, what I do have is a top of the range Samsung smart TV with internet capability. The only way I found of watching your live stream on the TV is to open a web browser, log into the website, watch through the site, and then click on the full screen. The problem is that every few minutes, very intrusive and a very intrusive and loud sound interrupts your broadcast. No. This sound is coming from one of the ads no. on your watch live page. No. I have uh, found, I have to refresh the page in my browser to make it go away, which is not easy on a TV. I know because I think I have the same TV as you. So I thought if I could build your feed into a page of my own, I could get rid of the ad. Hmm. <laughs> okay, first of all, but, people in the chat room, are you getting? Do you get that? Do you get a, an audible ad? Of of course, that should not happen. So if that is happening, then that's something that <clears throat> maybe our programmer. Needs to take a look needs at. Needs to look at. Hmm. That shouldn't be happening. And everyone in the chat room is saying, no, uh, that should never happen. Our ads are static. The advertisements are there. Uh, you can see if I look at this, everybody in the chat room is saying, saying no, there's no, no, no there's that none. doesn't happen. Um, there- I don't know if I can get... No, I don't have a screen right now. That may be... Oh, you know what? Because our new internet, we're on a different IP block. Mm. Can I take the time to change that? I'm looking at the live view here, though, and, right. and it's uh, right now it's the Logo Co. Um, uh, banner for cat5.tv slash logo, for example. Um, there should never be any audio. If you have audio, you probably have malware. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You've just diagnosed it. This is the problem. You've got some malware in your browser that is detecting wow. where the banners are supposed malware to go. Malware on the actual TV. Is that, is that what it oh, is? Yeah. yeah, I guess so. Eek. It's a TV. Yeah. That's weird. Well, because then the second part of his question, he says, um, could you live stream over YouTube? I know you guys like Roku, but more people have access to YouTube. <laughs> So if it has to be one or the other, Andy suggests YouTube. Okay, so why we... Now, I just got to change the IP address of that system here. Um, he can watch pre-recorded or post, I guess, recorded on YouTube, but it takes away the interactive element of the show, right. which makes sense. We want you to be interactive, Andy. So Let's see if... Um, 
you know, how our new internet connection goes for the, fir- for the first little while. Mm-hmm. And that will give us the impression of whether or not we've got enough power. Now, up until now, we've been, again, operating with this, and we've had limited amounts of power. And it also is pretty costly. And when, you get, uh, when you get running on something like this, it, it can cost some money. So um, I don't know if I can get access to my computer here. That's a shame. So so when it comes to streaming, sorry, I'm doing yeah. 10 things at once. When it comes to streaming on YouTube, it's it another doesn't... feed to do. So right. if it's a, a megabit up and we only have, say, four megabits to work with, we've got to really budget that bandwidth, not only cost-wise, but also to make sure that we don't start buffering on your player. Right, that makes sense. So because your TV is apparently capable of playing our feed, but you're getting these advertisements, I'd be looking at, well, why are you getting those advertisements? That's not from us. Mm -hmm. Um, The ads that we have are static on that page. Right. That said, boy, oh boy, I wish I could get the uh, computer screen up here. I'm still, we still just have a dead screen there because of the IP. I do hmm. need to figure that out before uh, before we jump over before. to everything else, like oh. news and such. Okay, well, if you want, I can just read another question. I wanted to show you, though, if you go to live.cat5.tv during a live mm-hmm. show uh, and view the source, I'll do that. Okay. Uh, you'll see the uh, the embed code. and And I don't encourage you to do that in that there are ads on our player, and those ads help to pay for the show and it makes a huge difference really important yeah i don't want to pretend that those ads don't make a difference because they do pay us we do get paychecks every single month because of those and it's paying a a rather substantial portion of our rent right it's because of them that we are here (laughs) so yeah and if you have any need please click the ads yeah absolutely um so i don't i don't encourage you to bypass those advertisements but if your tv is giving you trouble then Technically, I, I won't give you permission, but I'll say you can view the source. You can remove those ads from the source, save it as your own local file, and, and run it that way. Uh, it just would that would hurt our our mm-hmm. bottom line, basically. That's all. So maybe if you do mind. choose to do something like that, maybe you know, maybe do a Patreon thing instead. Yeah, right? yeah, that would be, no ads, that would but be maybe fair. Patreon. You know, there we go. I've almost yin, got a screen little here, yang. folks. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. If you're going to remove the ads, if you're going to use things like ad blockers, uh, why not um, kindly decide to support us through Patreon or through a monthly contribution or something like mm-hmm. that to make up for the losses? Or do all your Christmas shopping on Amazon. That too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are screaming deals there. <laughs> I am almost to the point where I've got uh, a, a desktop here. Sorry, you folks. almost have it. Almost have it there. What can I do? I wish I saved the International Federation of Robotics study until this point. Yes. <laughs> when we realize, okay, I've got, Oops, I've got oh. one now. There you go. So I'm, al- I'm almost there, folks. Sparkly has been working on getting mind test server running as yes. an on-ray docker. That's really cool. So, Tally, what do you think of that? This yeah. is awesome. Tally loves it. Uh, Mind so. Test is a free alternative to Minecraft. Right. Neither of which I have any knowledge of, except that I see a whole bunch of kids all the time yes. just just in they love, love it. with it. And you know what? It is kind of like the current, uh, you know, the modern Lego. Mm-hmm. Right? It's a digital version of being able to build stuff. And when we were growing up, it was, it was Lego blocks. And it still is, but they're expensive. As a dad, I know... It can be really, really pricey when the kids start building their Lego collection. Right. So, and all it does is it causes heartbreak because, you know, when they're 16 years old, they're going to fight over who owns the Lego. Yeah, that's... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Tally, Dennis Kelly says hi. <laughs> and she's in the chat room as well. Okay, so I believe I've got all of our shots here. I apologize for that, folks. There we go. It's bound to happen. What I was saying is hit control U on your keyboard and you'll see how all this works. But basically, you'd want to grab our, uh, there's Flow Player, and there's the, uh, the player itself, and so on. So you can, with a little bit of scripting knowledge, you can, you can do that, or you could just save that to your desktop and remove the ad code, and you'd, be, uh, you'd accomplish the same thing. 
but I'd be getting to the bottom of why it's causing audio. Yeah, it's weird. On. That is very weird. Okay, let's do one more question before I do the news, just in case we don't get okay. back to more questions. That would be That would be a tragedy, yeah. Especially because I like them. Okay. okay, so this is from Whiskey Zero. Hey, Whiskey Zero. Would you please check the contest entries to see if my entry message arrived? The email client shows undisclosed recipients. For this guy. For this guy. In the sent med message header. Can't confirm mm. that it went to the right address or not. No auto reply came back. So if anybody else is having uh, that problem, this is why it's important. Okay. If anybody else has that. Yes. Um, let us know. Whiskey Zero, I would say without even checking that you have not sent in a ballot if that's the case. Reason is, is you will receive an auto reply. So if you've checked your spam filters um, and it's not going to hurt you to send it in again. So try again. Contest at category5.tv. Check out the... Uh, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll throw... Uh, I don't have it on there. That's bald nerd. Uh, you, can, you can do it while I'm in the news. We can talk about it again. Oh, yeah. Well, here. I'll give it to you. There you go. Category5.tv. So contest at that address, category5.tv, okay? And uh, make sure that you do get the autoresponder. If you don't, then we haven't received your ballot. You can mosey on over um, to your, your set I'm if you like. heading on over. This is Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 412 for Tuesday, the 11th of August, 2015. Um, just a thought, too. We've been sending out these uh, Category 5 Technology TV vinyl stickers. These are our premium two-up vinyl stickers. One is for a darker laptop or whatever you want to stick it to, and one is for if you've got a silver something that you want to stick it to. Uh, it's kind of great, so two different contrasts. Uh, a couple of them did come back in the mail. Um, so I'm working on resending a couple. So if you didn't get yours, um, let me know and, uh, and I'll send them out. And of course I, uh, got that when I got back from vacation. So, um, I have not, uh, addressed resending them just yet, but they will be going out this week. So thanks for your patience. Okay. Over to, uh, Sasha in the newsroom. It's Tuesday, August 11th, 2015. And here are the stories we're covering this week. Fake iPhones coming out of China have led to a factory being raided by authorities. Carphone Warehouse is the latest retailer to be compromised in a cyber attack with personal details of around 2.5 million customers being stolen. Microsoft wants you to pay to play DVDs on Windows 10. A serious vulnerability in Firefox allowed the exploitation of private data on a user's computer. Both Linux and Windows are affected, and an emergency patch has been released. We'll tell you what you need to know. And Google has announced a surprise restructuring of their company, letting Google be a search engine again, while some of the unrelated acquisitions and creations have become part of a new parent company. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. You've got mad skills. Now hone them. Learn new skills or improve your existing ones with online video tutorials and training from lynda.com through our special link at cat5.tv slash lynda. Learn software, technology, creative, and business skills that you can use today to help you achieve your professional goals. Join today and start learning. We'll give you this chance to try it absolutely free with unlimited access to all of the courses. Sign up now for free, cat5.tv slash linda. I'm Sasha Dermatis, and here are the top stories from the Category 5.tv newsroom. A factory which made up to 41,000 fake Apple iPhones has been raided in China, leading to nine arrests. The operation involved hundreds of workers repackaging secondhand smartphone parts as new parts for iPhones for export, as new iPhones for export. Ooh. The counterfeiting operation is said to have produced about $19 million in fake iPhones. Whoa. The factory was discovered on the 14th of May, but was revealed on social media by Beijing's Public Security Bureau this past Sunday, according to reports. The operation was set up in January and was led by a husband and wife team on the northern outskirts of the Chinese capital, according to Beijing authorities. They said that they had been alerted to the factory by U.S. authorities, which had seized some of the fake phones. The fake iPhones were so convincing that many of the factory staff were themselves convinced that they were employed by Apple. The reports come amid an official Chinese crackdown, Chinese crackdown on counterfeit goods 
with authorities pushing firms to trademark their goods. Now, I have watched a documentary on on counterfeited products, and I know that there is a huge problem in China with cre- – there's a huge counterfeit culture. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, many of the products are really convincing, but there isn't any testing. There isn't any environmental. Um, there oh. isn't a lot of human rights that sure. are – so. The thing is, if you're buying something and it seems too good to be true as far as prices go, Robbie, like, oh. Like, for example, yeah. if you if you bought a counterfeit laptop, yep. right, then well, something could happen to it. <laughs> and you know what I, I think is a good example? We looked at the SJ Cam SJ4000 last week on the show. Mm-hmm. And as I mentioned on that show, when they first brought them out, they didn't brand it as SJ Cam. So a lot of counterfeit versions came out that say SJ4000 on them. They look identical. They they look, it's really, really convincing. But again, somebody got a hold of the blueprints in China and they manufactured a whole bunch of knockoffs and, uh, and are selling them as that product. So it's really important that we are careful about what, what versions we buy, where yeah. we're buying it from. If you, it's legit, right? if you are buying a knockoff or a counterfeit and you don't know, that's one thing. But if you are buying yeah. it and you do know, then... There are victims in that. In that, that is actually absolutely. You think yeah. about slave trade, slave labor, and the the treatment of workers, as you say, but mm-hmm. also to save ten bucks, or whatever it may be. For one, like thinking of the knockoff cams, they're not as good of quality, so you're you're automatically just why save ten dollars on it, and then think about the the people that you're that you're supporting as well. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Personal details of up to 2.4 million Carphone Warehouse customers may have been accessed in a cyber attack with up to 90,000 customers' encrypted credit card details accessed. Oh. Yeah. The breach concerns some of the company's separately managed divisions such as onestopphoneshop.com, e2save.com, and the mobiles.co.uk websites. It also provides services to ID Mobile, Talk Talk Mobile, Talk Mobile, and some Carphone warehouse customers. The retailer's owner, Dixon's Carphone, said it was very sorry for the attack and will be informing all customers who may have been affected by the breach. Just another example. Like it, every single week, we seem to have, <laughs> like, ev- like in the news, there I have five news stories. At least one of them is always that there's a company that has accidentally leaked or allowed in. Yeah. Some, you know, some intrusion and encrypted credit card numbers have been And you, you might even get tired of hearing about it, but yet many of our viewers may deal with these companies, and it's important for you to be aware that these things have been leaked because you need to change your passwords. You need to call your bank and make sure mm-hmm. that your credit card hasn't been compromised and that your, your credit score hasn't been compromised or even your identity stolen. Right. So it's scary that it's still happening, but we'll just keep telling you about it when it does happen. And hopefully one day it will not be in the news. <laughs> hopefully one day everything will be secure. As <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that one. I'm picturing a world where we're all in straight jackets. Yeah. It's the only way. As Windows 10 upgrades continue, we're bound to see how free it really is. And one of the added little fees some didn't expect is having to pay extra to play DVDs. If you partake in Microsoft's free upgrade offer from Windows 7 or 8 to Windows 10, Windows Media Center will be removed without warning. In its place, a new app called Windows DVD Player has been added to the Windows Store, which you will have to purchase, and it costs around $15. Most versions of Windows 7 or Windows 8 or 8.1 include Media Center. And the good news is, if your computer had Media Center before the upgrade, you'll be credited with a free copy of the Windows DVD player. In practice, this means that most people upgrading from Windows 7 will have access to the Windows DVD player app for free. However, most of the Windows 8 upgraders won't. Also, if you buy a full Windows 10 Home or Pro license or a new Windows 10 computer, you won't be eligible to download the DVD player app for free. Which blows my mind. Why not just include it and put an extra $10 on the price tag? But Well, how do you do that if you're saying that it's free, right? Like, oh, yeah, here's our free OS. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll get oh, into it's, that. It's crazy. You know a better option? 
is to install VLC or another free open source True. media player. Yeah, good point. So, but my goodness, here's free, and then if you want to play DVD, although, I mean... There are patents uh, surrounding DVD architecture, though, MPEG, for example, and, and so I guess it's inevitable if you're going to give away the OS for free, you've got to have those patents paid for, I guess, the licensing. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I ha it's been so long since I tried to play a DVD on a computer. True. I, yeah. But still, I, I just blows my mind that you would say free and then say, oh, no, by free, I mean $15. Right. And, and my, my case is that I would rather rip that DVD to my hard drive, put it on the server, and then we watch it through Plex. But now if you live in the UK, that's illegal. That's right. That on is your, illegal. your own stuff, as you said a couple, was it last week or the week before? Two weeks ago, yeah. yeah. Crazy. A website in Russia has been caught exploiting a serious zero-day vulnerability in Mozilla's Firefox browser, prompting the open-source developer to deliver an emergency update that fixes the flaw. The bug in a built-in PDF reader allowed attackers to steal sensitive files stored on the hard drives of computers that used the vulnerable Firefox version. The attack was used against both Windows and Linux users. Mozilla researcher Daniel Veditz wrote in a blog post published on Thursday, the exploit code targeting Linux users uploaded cryptographically protected system passwords, bash command histories, secure shell, which is SSH configurations, and keys. The attacker downloaded several other files, included his, including histories for my SQL and reconfiguration and configurations for Romania, FileZilla, and PSI Plus, text files that contain the strings pass and access in the names. Any shell scripts were also grabbed. The attack targeting Windows users appeared to go after files of interest to software developers. The targeted data included subversion, S3 browser, and FileZilla configuration files. Dot purple and PSI Plus account information and site configuration files from eight different popular FTP clients. <laughs> Crazy. Firefox users running Apple's OS 10 weren't targeted. The exploit was served in an advertisement on an undisclosed Russian news site, but Vedit said that he couldn't rule out the possibility that other sites also hosted the attack. Some of those may have targeted Macs in addition to Windows and Linux. Bettitz wrote, the exploit leaves no trace that it had been run on the local machine. If you use Firefox on Windows or Linux, it would be prudent to change any passwords and keys found in the above-mentioned files if you use the associated programs. Mozilla has issued an emergency update patching the vulnerability. Users should check their version of Firefox to make sure that they're running versions 39.0.3. The fix has also been shipped in Firefox ESR 38.1.1. Wow. So that is significant. We are not, are we, we don't use Firefox, do we, Robbie? Uh, I do actually use Firefox in a lot of cases. I, I tend to lean more toward Chrome these days or Chromium. But, uh, yeah, I guess I do use Firefox for some things. Does this affect you, then? Do you, do you yeah, have any? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The updates that were released this morning, important that you make sure you get those in there. It doesn't necessarily affect me in that I, I hope I haven't been exploited. Right. Because that's freakylicious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So but how do you know? It doesn't leave a trace. How would you even know? You wouldn't you know wouldn't if know. you were exploited. So if you have any doubts, change your passwords. And your username? Can you do that? Change. Well, it boils down to, for example, if you use FileZilla, which mm -hmm. we all do, right? FileZilla client, you use that for your FTP and SFTP connections. You've got your site manager set up with all your favorite SFTP connections. And it can be accessed through this exploit in Firefox. That yeah. is not a good situation. And you would never have any idea that someone did it. Crazy. So change your passwords is the only way to know for sure that you're safe. That's a, it. A good and easy way to change your password is to use password box. It's true. Just saying. <laughs> All right. Google has unveiled a surprising restructuring, creating a new parent company called Alphabet Inc. 
Under the rebranding, Google will retain its best-known businesses such as Search, Apps, YouTube, and Android. Some of the newer entities, such as the Investment and Research Divisions, the Smart Home Unit Nest, and the Drone Arm will be run under Alphabet. Google founder Larry Page said it would create a simpler structure for what had become a diverse group of businesses. Mr. Page said in a blog post, Our company is operating well today, but we think we can make it cleaner and more accountable. The whole point is that alphabet companies should have independence and develop their own brands. Mr. Page will become chief executive of alphabet, with senior vice president Sundar Pichai becoming CEO of Google. Mr. Page's fellow Google co-founder, Sergey Brin, will become president of Alphabet, and Eric Schmidt, the current Google chairman, will become the executive chairman of the holding company. So lots of changes there, Mm. and I love the new name. I love (laughs) Alphabet Inc., I will tell you. I wish that I had a company named Alphabet and that I was the president of Alphabet. Big thanks this week to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us. If you have found a news story you'd like to send, email it to newsroom at category5.tv. For all your tech news with a slight Linux bias, visit the category5.tv newsroom at newsroom.category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Sasha Dermatis. Thanks, Sasha. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. Sasha over in the newsroom working her way over here. Yeah, tangled up in cords and stuff. Got your coffee? You ready to do this? All right. All right. So if I lose my password in, and I need to find my, is it root password? If I need to find my root password? I know. What would you do, right? What would I do? What would you do? I lost it. Uh, root passwords in Linux are really where it's at because that's what you need in order to do any kind of change or runes to the file system or install updates and things like that. So worst case scenario, like if I did lose my password, I could do nothing. Is that what would happen? Nothing of consequence. You can yes. still use the computer in its current state, but as soon as your computer says, oh, there's a new version of Firefox, you need to install this because there's a massive exploit, you wouldn't be able to because you don't have your root password. This That's is the desktop example. A good example um, that I've encountered before is that um, in the business, we tend to deploy a lot of servers, and sometimes it happens where, okay, I deployed a test server, a development server, and whoops, forget what the password is. So what do I do in that case? Let's hop on over to a Debian terminal window here, and I'm just going to log in as my user. There we go. So I'm logged into to Debian. And as my user, there's not a whole lot I can do. Like if I go... Okay, so I need to change my network, for example. Make a change to my network card. Whatever I do here, no matter what I do, I try to write it, and it's going to say error writing. I can't change my network interface because permission is denied. So... Anything at all that I want to do that has to do with the system, I can't do. So I need to use, well, in some cases, sudo. But on Debian, I'm going to type su. And then i got to know, OK, well, what's my root password? And I try the one that I thought it was. Ah, <sighs> great. Authentication failure. I can't do anything. I'm absolutely stuck on this system. You, maybe you've been there before. If you haven't been there before, it may happen someday to you. And so we want to show you how you can get around this today in a safe way. So I'm going to simply uh, reboot that system. I don't even, I can't even reboot. I can't even type reboot because I don't have super user access. So I'm actually going to have to physically reset the computer. That's the only way. And when it's booting, I'm going to get my grub screen here. This is the bootloader. And this is the first thing that you see. And by default, it's going to boot into Debian or whatever Linux distro you're using. But what we're going to do is we're going to hit E on our keyboard. And magically, it's switched over to text mode because we are now editing our Grub bootloader only in a temporary way. So when we reboot, anything that we've changed here is going to be undone. So you don't have to worry. Eh, You're not going to break anything Um, at this point anyways. You're not going to break Grub. Scroll down until you see a line that says Linux. See that? And that line is telling it where the kernel is and how to boot. So once you've got there, uh, hit end. And that puts me, see where my cursor ended up? At the end of quiet there. So this line is actually one line, but it has wrapped. And what we want to do is add a space, and we want to actually tell it that we're going to, instead of booting into our normal kernel and the traditional environment, we're going to instead 
init equals slash bin slash bash. And what that tells it is that we're going to now boot into our bash terminal prompt. Okay? So you'll notice that in order to do this, I have to have physical access to the box because I have to be able to reboot and I have to be able to edit the grub uh, bootloader before I load the computer. So you don't have to worry about somebody doing this particular thing to you from a remote connection or anything like that. They have to have physical access to the computer because you've got to reboot first. You've got to get into, you got to hit E at the grub bootloader and then you've got to make this change and boot up. So no concerns there. We've got to have physical access. As soon as I've added init equals slash bin slash bash, I hit control X to boot using my changed environment. And you'll see what's going to happen here. Instead of getting to the login prompt, I am now root. Ha-ha! But there's nothing really to do. There are, there, well, there's one thing that I have to do first and foremost. If I type mount, I'm going to see my slash. See dev slash sda1 on slash ro. What does that mean? Take a guess. The one above mm -hmm. it, I'll give you a hint, is rw. But see that line? dev slash sda1 is mounted on slash mm -hmm. ext4 ro in this instance means read only so it's a read only file system i can't make any changes to that file system so how can i change my password you change that you change that yeah all right yeah you change that you change that flip thing. it R -O. reverse it yeah change it to make an it. rw rw all right how do we do that well okay let's uh let's do it mount dash o mm -hmm remount okay mm -hmm. comma rewrite slash so we're saying okay we're going to remount slash right as read write enter now if i type mount we'll see that device dev slash sda1 is rw read nice write. okay now we're going to be able to make changes to our file system on this computer Really, really simple, right? So now, what do I do? P A S S W D root. Enter so new Unix password. Cool. Enter my new password. Retype it. Notice that I didn't have to enter the existing password, okay? Right. Unlike if I had have booted and logged in as Robbie and typed password, password. Root, yeah. Then I would have had to know the existing root password in order to do this. And the point is, you don't know it. And it the is point forgotten. Is I don't know it, so I'm stuck, right? So now I have successfully updated it. Now, if you boot in and you do and you try this, you type password p a s s w d uh, root, and it tells you after entering it that um, it's not authenticated and all that probably means that you're still running in read-only mode. So make sure you double check that you set it to read-write. Because if you don't have access to make changes to the password file, it won't be able to make the changes and it will fail. Right. So now, I, because I'm booted into this bin bash thing, I don't have any like shutdown commands. I can't type reboot or anything. It, it doesn't work. Instead, what I do is I type exit. Oh, wait, don't type exit. No, because you might be on an SSD. You might have a solid state hard drive. Right. Before you type exit, let's sync our hard drive. Just type sync. Enter. Done. That's it. What is sync? Huh. Force changed blocks to disk. Update, Update the super, the super block. So what happens is sometimes if you're on certain types of devices, you may be making changes in memory that haven't been written to disk yet. So then if, if I reboot, I'm going to lose those changes. Right. Make, make sure you sync first, just as a, as a safety precaution to make sure that you don't reboot and say, hey, I thought I changed that and it didn't work. Now type exit, and you'll see that the kernel is just panicked and it's dead. So now I can reboot the computer. And again, because I didn't actually make changes to the grub bootloader, all mm -hmm. I did was make temporary changes. You'll see now if I hit enter, it's going to boot up normally and not into this strange mode that I had created with the init environment variable. There we go. That's going to boot up. And now I should be able to SU as my user using the password that I just created. So I'm going to first log in as me. Now SU and enter my password and done. I now have the root password. So cool. There you have it, folks. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Thanks for tuning in tonight. I think we've still got some time. Yes. Like two Perfect. hours. 
We have, we've got another two hours to go. Yeah, no. great. Um, I'm going to read another question. Thanks, Sasha. This is from Dave Maydew. Hiya, Dave. Hi, Robbie. Hey. As you know, I'm sight impaired and I've been using Linux since early 2009 as my sole operating system, which is awesome. Yeah. Anyway, I have been approached by a few members of the BCAB, which is the British Computer Association for the Blind, about how to set up better quality voices other than the robotic voice on the Orca screen reader. I have read somewhere that you can use Festival in conjunction with Orca to provide a more human voice. Um, but I'm not sure how to do this and was wondering if you could help in any way. I know this has put many VI and blind PC users off either using or making the switch to Linux because the screen reader sounds like a Dalek? What's the Dalek? Dalek. Dalek. Uh, from, um, Is that? from Doctor Who, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna get there at some point. I'm gonna watch that show. I use the, <laughs> screen, I use the screen magnifier a lot by using Com Compass Fusion in Ubuntu 14.04. Screen magnification, yeah. yeah. That's the ability, that's like when I uh, that's this is Compass Fusion. I can do that, and that helps so much when you need to be able to read the word "test," and you can blow it up big like that on your your 52 inch TV. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. Now I have to say, on a different note, my fiance, not my fiance, Dave's fiance, is around 17 17 weeks pregnant with their first child, who's going to be a Linux lover. And um, all of right. the three stepchildren already run Linux in Fantastic. in the shape of Ubuntu. So I just wanted Wonderful. to say, Linux all the way. Um, Dave says, all the best and live long and prosper the Linux way. <laughs> okay. Festival is a Linux tool that does uh, text to speech. Right. Works great. It is Dalek-like. So does that mean robotic? Yes. Exterminate. Exterminate. Why wouldn't they just make it more... Hu is there a way to make it more human? Well, you got to think about the intricacies of text-to-speech. It has to create the nuances of speech. And so right. it's going to sound computerized. My GPS does a really good job. Because a GPS has some real person reading the script so into a microphone. What, how many things does a GPS say? Maybe street names? Tells me to take a lot of U-turns. But how many... But turn left. Turn right. Make okay. a U-turn. So these are I statements that can be pre-recorded and then played back. Right. And so they will sound real because they are not auto-generated by the computer. They're actually recorded right. statements, I would expect. Right. I just... I want there to be a solution for Dave. Uh, CMU. Uh, Arctic Voices has better... Um, sounding voices and they have a demo page if you go to festvox.org slash voice demos dot html there it is festvox festival voice uh, okay so these this will allow you to try some of the arctic voices um, that are available from the CMU speech uh, people and this this will give you an idea of what it sounds like so you can try out some of those. And then what I'll do, we don't really have time here tonight to show you how to do this. Um, so what I'll do instead is I'll tell you um, where to go. I'll post a link for you. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's kind of complicated. What you can do is you can import these higher-end speech uh, voices. Okay. Like computerized actors, if you will, into Festival. Okay. And so then you can utilize the better voice files from this mm -hmm. other sound uh, text to speech engine and create something that sounds a lot better. And they're freely available and, and sound great. I would love to volunteer my voice. I will just read all of the English oh my language. Goodness. It's like all the the little nuances and sounds How and fun would that be really to have not, my I've voice a, read a whole nasty. screen to you. Yeah, and it never really quite sounds like you. Oh. It does sound robotic. So. Oh. Well, hopefully that helps, Dave. Dave, I'm going to post... Uh, I've just posted something for you in the chat room just to give you uh, the link to those files so that you can, you can give them a listen. 
And what I would do is get into Google and type festival better voices. The first thing that comes up uh, is how to make festival use better voices uh, in the Ubuntu forums. It's an old post, but still relevant. Uh, Festvox.org is a good resource, uh, as I've previously showed you there. And you're going to see a lot of different things there, just knowing what you're looking for. So it's Mm -hmm. really to, to use... Uh, festival with the CMU speech synthesis. Right. That's what you want to look for. And there are countless tutorials on how to do that. And if you have any trouble, then please let me know. And that would be a great uh, demonstration, I think. And in fact, Sasha, one of the things that we're going to be doing in the, in the reasonably near future, I'm actually in talks right now, not with text-to-speech developers, but right. with speech-to-text developers okay because we are going to be building using a raspberry pi and some other hardware okay we're going to actually be building our own amazon echo style system that we're going to be able to use voice control voice commands to uh to do various operations and it will be able to speak back to us using artificial intelligence therefore we will be tuning into things like festival because it's all going to be powered by Linux on the Raspberry Pi. So these are th- topics that we are going to be covering in Season 9, uh, which is coming up sooner than, than I can believe. Uh, so make sure you uh, send in your questions, and we'll make sure that those are covered for you. Wow. I can't believe how quickly the time flies. This happens every week. Sorry if we didn't get to your question, folks, but uh, we do our best, and uh, we'd love to keep receiving them. Almost did all Almost. of the questions. Whoa. Almost. There's only one more. Oh, oh, that one person sitting in the chat room going, my question, my question. I'm so sorry. See, you'll have to tune in next you week and next see week. which question it is. Yeah, it's <laughs> a brilliant question. Same bat time. Please don't forget, okay, I know we're over time. Free play, buddy. I got one to give away. It's going out next week, so you are down to the wire. Email contest at category5.tv, and then you will uh, just give me your username on the website, and you'll be good to go. All right? Yeah. And and we'll do the draw next week. See ya. Bye. Yay. Ah! We hope you enjoyed the show. Category 5 TV broadcasts live from Barrie, Ontario, Canada every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on demand or through cable TV, check out the local showtimes in your area at Category5.tv and find out when you can watch live and interact in the community chat room. Category 5 is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. 